Okay, welcome to another episode of Canadian Corner. This is Liddell speaking, but uh, joined by my co-host here, Silver, Silver, Silver. Hello. We are doing a NGS Season 10 matchup between Tricky Gooses and Roomba Rotations, who are in Division A East. Uh, I believe this was a Week 5 matchup? Maybe a Week uh, 4 matchup. Um, oh. Right now, we currently have rumor rotations high in the standings, and Gooses are in about in the middle of the pack, but this is they are both playoff teams currently, so this obviously has some impl implications for seeding as the season goes on. And uh, for context, this is a week five. You were correct with your first guess uh, game. Uh, in terms of map, the first map we are going to is Infernal Shrines. That was picked by rumor rotations. They also banned out Hanamura and Towers of Doom. Meanwhile, Tricky Goose... Gooses banned out, Braxis holdout, and Tomb of the Spider Queen. So we're getting pretty much a lot of the smaller maps taken away. Uh, Tomb gone, the two lane maps in Braxis and Hanamura gone. So we're seeing teams. I see those two lane maps banned a lot, actually, at least in Division A East. Yeah, I mean you have to have a very different playstyle to play on both of them and Spiders as well. To be fair, because it's such a small map. Oh, well, the Chris Hollow is. A little unusual, Ben. I think it's also fair to say two lane maps snowball a bit easier than other maps. So, you know, in competitive play when the points matters, it's a bit scarier when you know a map can snowball away from you fairly yeah. quickly. Are you telling me Hanamura can snowball? I've never seen that before. <laughs> Thank God we're not seeing Hanamura and it's banned. Oh, yeah. That would be a 30 minute game of nothing. Yeah. But without further ado, are you ready to start? Yeah, we can start it up. Right. And as mentioned before, this is a replay cast, so we'll have the nice rewind and pause functionality too. If we need it, and it saves us from technical difficulties. Um, yeah, and yeah. unlike last stream, this is on a current patch stream, so... We can watch God. it together, how nice. Yeah, thank God. Uh, do we want to quickly commentate on... Players? Yeah, let's do the players now while it's nice uh, on the screen for everyone. I'll do the gooses first. On the yeah. left side of your screen, we have Duck on the Ragnaros, Nanani on the Grey Main, Birdie on the Savannas, Zloth on the Diablo, and Carpe Diem on the Anduin. Yes, I, uh, I think Zloth is a new addition to the Tricky Gooses, so we will see how he does comparatively. I think Wise was the old tank, and I think he is currently no longer on Tricky Gooses. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to pause. Well, actually, I can play. 50 seconds. On the other side, for Roomba rotations, we have Iron on Stukov, Haiva on the Cassia, Zygni on uh, Kalthas, Idioms on Joanna, and MJ Doom playing the Zool. Alright, uh, Silver, I'm going to start with the more normal team first. What do you think of Roomba rotations team? I think they have a pretty blase team. Um, I like the synergy between Janna and Cassia with the blinds. Uh, the Zul double rotate is always nice. You know, Rag cannot really keep up with him on the double soak. I don't know if Rag could even double soak. He not can, so can but he's susceptible to ganks. He doesn't do it quite as quick. He's he, it's not ideal, I would say. Oh, for, he's no Zul. As he's no Zul. Uh, I like it. Um, I'm a little stuff I don't like about it is the lack of pushing, like siege damage. I know Roomba really likes to do a tricky little get first objective and just take a fort instead. But we do see a kill come in right onto the Ragnaros off the bat, but Kale falls in return. That will be a one for one. Uh, Convection is not chosen, so he'll not be losing those stacks. But we do see. Oh, anyone trying to pull a Sylvanas to safety, but she goes down. Alright, well, yeah, we saw that early aggression coming from Moomba, and really, if you're the Gooses, you don't necessarily want that because Diablo has no souls right now, so he's quite uh, squishy. And then we and also have. Uh, Ragnaros, which I might call the biggest glass can cannon bruiser in the game. He doesn't have a lot of escapes or, or sustain. sustain or armor, but he, he does, does have high damage. Better. Yeah, he does get a little better later in the game. He gets some talents that helps that out yeah. just a little bit. Um, no, but anyway, I think Rupa's very aggressive, so I was going to say I don't see a lot of super hard engage from them, which is sometimes concerning for their playstyle, but clearly they're making it work as we just saw. And no siege damage, as I mentioned before. Or at least not high siege damage. Cassie does quite a bit, so it's uh, Kale, but there's not a Sylvanas, for example. But you do have the wave clear, which is 
significant on with Zul and Joanna and Kalpas. So, you know, the siege isn't there, but in, on this map, I think if you can clear waves constantly faster than your opponent, you can get kind of slow siege damage. At the time. Yeah, I guess I pointed that out because I'm familiar with Roomba's uh, tricks after playing in a division with them for about three to four seasons at this point. So, just stuff I'm key I'm looking out for them as stuff they might do. Uh, Liddell, Tricky Gooses, same question. Well, you obviously have the opposite in that they have the most push of almost any team comp you could ever have with Greymane and Sylvanas on the same team, which she disables the towers and Greymane smacks them down. We also have Rag, who's pretty high in siege damage, although he's going to be soaking for most of the game. But you do have that wave clear, unless they're going for a wombo combo alt, I'm not sure yet, uh, depending on what alt Rag goes, whether it's Lava Wave or Sulfurish Sulfuric Smash? Or something I don't like know. that? You'd assume it's Lava Wave, but big, Tricky Goose is never stunny, know. stunny. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Over bows. <laughs> uh, and you have uh, the Anduin Light Bomb, with, and I think Anduin's probably just the most generically good. She's like the what Joanna used to be for tanks. She is for mm -hmm. heal, He is for healers now. You know? Yeah, and you do see uh, them getting top cam and giving a wave to Zul there. Just a solo laner shout out. Zul doing his job. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna quickly bring like up the stats feet. screen. So yeah, uh, maybe Zool. not. They're doing oh. a gank on yep. the. It looks out. like Rag is probably gonna go down here with the Zul. Nope, he doesn't stop to get out. Uh, he has barely edge speed. This is actually the blind from Cassia get a fish him off. But that is a camp and a kill to Ruby Rotations. That's that a great call. Definitely goes into their early aggression. You, when you're facing Ruby Rotations, you pretty much have to expect them running at you. Um, if you don't yeah. see them on the map, they're running at you. Basically, <laughs> yeah, is how it goes. Now they're at least in our team. We talked about them. It's a very aggressive team. Don't want to be the dead bush, but they. Uh, this will not be the last time they try to do something like that. It's uh, all about if, basically, if you can survive this early aggression and get rag, getting you macro value um, all over the map, is kind of how I see this game turning a little bit. Obviously, Can... first Punisher is not a huge deal either, though. No, not at all. It's more of the uh, kills and XP lead that we see uh, Roomba pulling ahead. It's the bigger issue, I notice. Yeah, so while I had stats up quickly, it might have changed a little bit during the objective phase, but Zul basically is double the soak of Ragnarok right now. Just yeah. showing the impact of the uh, I mean, of that early game. Zool, Zool is double soaking, while Rag is sort of forced to double soak with his team, in a sense. Like his right, team's I'm just showing that like as an indication of like how many yeah. resources you have to... Uh, extra resources you have to uh, divert to him yeah. to keep up Although, the to be fair, Aruba also sent two people to do their bruiser camp, where Rag went on the bruiser camp on the side of Tricky. So that also plays for a few waves. Right. And we saw which one worked out better. <laughs> <laughs> both both these middle camps are getting picked up again. Pretty much on this map, you do them on cooldown whenever yeah. they're up. Um, it's more of a denial thing, I always figured, than an actual pushing thing. It's more of a denial, and honestly, yeah, it's just it gives you an opportunity to gank the other team while they're doing it, kind of thing. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, if it does end up whacking the towers a little bit, it, that is fairly nice. But we usually don't see that too much unless someone's down or uh, objectives popping. No, and also, would you say these are the weakest camps in the game? These these goat things, whatever they're called? Yeah. Yeah. They're not strong. Uh, but you can have six of them in a lane, and then they're really plowing things down. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, they're uh, just kind of generic camps. I mean, they kind of seem like pumpkins, but pumpkins can explode. Yeah, the pumpkins explode. And I would say the pumpkins uh, probably even do a little bit more damage when they're pushing a lane. That's my perception. Uh, maybe. I don't think so. I think they do, uh, like, oh, we do see uh, Ragnaros uh, stunned by Joanna out of his uh, trait. So that's going to be on cooldown for the next few seconds. But nothing's really going to happen there outside of a wall being taken top lane. We have level 10s coming online, and I'm actually being good about it this time. Oh, the minor fight's breaking up. Oh. Well, Diablo's being dragged in as uh, Duck is forced to retreat on the Ragnaros. This time his trait is up, and Joanna's ult is down, and that's going to end this kind of siege. For the next little bit, at least. Was that possibly but... used a bit too early, as they're able to back out now, and uh... you won't be able to use that during the objective now? I think it might have been, but at the same time, like, it was a 3v4 and they forced uh, Roomba Rotations to back off very heavily. So, 
like it might have been used preemptively, yes, but it might like we can't know if it would have gotten real value or not. I'm more worried that Ruma's gonna go right back top and continue hard pushing. Right, we do see an aggressive play too by uh, Gooses though to move in behind them here, hopefully to catch them on a rotate. Yeah, although this is very aggressive going in from behind the uh, keep wall. Uh, Stukov, the one being caught up, a light bomb and Diablo thing gonna lock down Joe and Kelthos. They're all getting low, but uh, the silence is really doing a lot of damage to uh, the entire team of Tricky, but they do manage to get the Stukov finally, and it looks like Joe is gonna fall here too. Um, oh, and Diablo going back in for the Cassia, but not a lot could be found there. That was a 5v4 for most of that fight. The Zul soaking into their lanes. I think is why it went so heavily into Tricky Goose's favor. That's the type of kind of sneaky pick aggression you can also see from Gooses sometimes when they're playing kind of these pick comps. Um, and they're quite good at getting into the right position to set it up well. Uh, I like the aggressiveness yeah. there and honestly, Joe showing her weakness because I really wouldn't... S s normal, the Joe I know and love, old Joe, <laughs> uh, would not have gotten... probably not have died in that situation. No, although she did get hit by both the Light Bomb and the Diablo ult, which took a lot of her health away and stuck for quite a long period of time. So, I think that definitely played into that. Uh, despite getting those picks though, they still, they have a bit of a monkey lead right now, but it's not huge and it's, we're getting basically another team fight at fairly equal, equal monkeys. Yeah. Uh... Tricky Goose is having mostly AA, that means they're not going to have too much poke to try and steal these uh, monkeys away from the other team. Although Rag is there doing quite a lot of damage. You can see a lot of posturing going down top lane as well. Yeah, both teams want to wait for the camps to get cleared, just so that they're not retreating oh. into a wave. Joanna ulting the Ragnaros, forcing a, uh, a pull from Anduin, but Light Bomb into the Zul. Uh, that's one way to counter that pull. 200 IQ there. Yeah, uh, a nice stun coming on Joe as she gets rooted by the Anduin, followed up by Diablo as he ults. Rayman almost getting down, he's gonna maybe go down to the Cassie, but she misses her Q. Meanwhile, Diablo is getting beat upon top lane, but you know, Diablo does have souls and he's right back up, and Cassia is not gonna be up as fast. But that might not matter, as there's only 10 monkeys left. And they, yeah, they don't have any positional... Oh, uh... but Zul is getting forced out of the fight. Uh, they might get this, but will someone die for it? We'll see. Both both teams playing surprisingly timid. Not not like their playstyles to be that timid over an objective there. Uh, but uh, this is interesting. Ruba was forced to tap almost everyone, and this puncher is going to get quite a lot of damage for Ruba's here, really, to help secure it. It is a frozen puncher, and its first wave missed the fort, so that's actually a fairly big deal for burning this puncher quickly. Joe is taking quite a bit of damage though of this fort, so that might not actually matter as the puncher jumping on Diablo and all by the team with the silence. It's gonna be rough for uh, Zloth, as this first fort does go down. Uh, Zloth, uh, not having a ton of uh, percentage of health, although he will fall here just due to the amount of CC uh, that's coming out on him. Uh, Greyman trying to escape, does manage to. Uh, Punisher's still actually having 35% health, it's quite a bit. I think they're probably gonna get a wall or two, but I doubt Keep's gonna go. All right, well, now we, do we finally have a respite that I can talk about alts, because I was ready, and then we had about... Do uh, don't don't complain, just do it. Four minutes You're not going to have another time. Just go. Right. I'm going to try and do them all with the actual names. So we have Blessed Shield on, jo on Joanna, Valkyrie on the Cassia, uh, Poison Nova on the Zul. We have uh, Flame Phoenix on the Kael'thas, and we have Pushy Pushy on the Stukov. On the side I, of she, Tricky Juices, the actual name. we have Lava Wave, we have Curse Bullet, we have uh, Wailing Arrow, we have Apoc for the Diablo, and we have Light Bomb for the Anduin, so I actually nailed uh, it. Yeah, uh, I do want to point out it's Massive Shove for the Stukov, because both both ults can be pushy-pushy. We do see a Light Bomb getting hit on the Joe as Diablo also stuns her. We do see a great uh, Blessed Shield stopping that engages, so we'll Poison Nova comes out hitting almost all of them on Diablo, killing him rather quickly. Uh, that is a low to uh, Diablo, by the way. Yeah. We do see uh, Birdie and Banani barely getting out alive with Edwin there to heal him up, and Rag taking a long way to come back. But he does have his passive, so this is not going to be too much pushing for uh, Rupert Rotations. Uh, Rupert Rotations is just backing up, knowing they can't really get any more value here, but Zool is going to go back to his soak game. They're going to get some camps. They... Have quite a 
it's a subtle lead, but it feels very commanding watching this game. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yeah, no, like, they're definitely the playmakers. Like, we saw, like, since level one, that Roomba kind of, like, always getting the better of the trades. Uh, Turkey did get that one fight that went very much their way. But, uh, you know, that was when, you know, the stars aligned and they kind of called the shots. You Birdie. see Birdie running for his life. Oh, there is the Blessed Shield. He does force an alt out, though. So, yes. value? Not the worst, I guess. I'm not going to say, I would say value, but it's... It's not an even trade, but it's a slightly better trade. He got something out of a shit, a shit sandwich, so... Mm. I mean, he also did a few hundred damage to that mid fort. And, and he there. was that deep to secure a bottom fort um, open. Mm. So, you know, if you include that in the value, then I would say Yeah, value. then that's more worth yeah. But yeah, no, I I feel like Trick needs to start playing to their uh, tune a little more if they want to get back and start winning this game. But by no means are they far behind or out. You know, they're only one level down. Not even a full level. Uh, they're tied on uh, forts and keeps. The only thing is kills is that's not looking very good. I think that's where most of the XP lead comes from, uh, from the rotation. We have two camps fighting top. It looks like blue blue side is actually going to defeat it faster. So we will have some passive soak for Goose's top. Or passive push. Or say, push. Not, so. yeah. And that's actually a sizable wave with it too. Although, I might, most of them might die as I say that. We do see a fight coming down bot. You see Diablo very deep. He's going to ult and stun the Kale. Uh, the Poison Noah does come out, hits the Anduin. He's going to be actually pretty hurt by that. Diablo now, now tried to retreat. Uh, the Rue coming out onto the Joanna is almost going to save him, but does the Living Bomb get him? It does not. He lives with barely any health. Stuke up trying to throw a Pulsating... Uh, I don't know actually to know the name of the building. Pulsating something's trying to get the final kill, but I think this fort will go down to the side of Ruba Rotations. And we do see Rag, though, stealing a lot of monkeys from the Zul. They're almost killing him, actually. Yeah, and we did get top fort taken by this... Uh, by the camp. By the camp. Which is... Which is... We, we're even in structures, despite the kills being 9 to 4, favoring Ruba mm -hmm. rotation. So that's, that's getting the most out of your macro bank for your buck, if your goose is right now. Yeah. Uh, nope. Diablo going on the Joe, but just more pushing her out than actually doing her. Blessed Shield does come out already on the Diablo. He's getting to half health fairly quickly. Light Bomb going and hitting nobody. It is 34 to 22 with the Kalthos Phoenix on it, so uh, Tricky Goose is going to have to make some plays here and do some massive denial to stop it, but it's already too late. As Cassia pulling the Grey Main, Cassia taking a lot of damage actually from this Grey Main, as the tanks are too busy pushing off the Diablo. But now Anduin is in trouble, as the Punisher's there, uh, a nice obstacle coming up for Sylvanas to stop that. But Diablo is slowed, and he has, uh, that's not going to matter as the Lava Wave comes down, doing a good amount of damage to the Punisher, and kind of denying this chase. Uh, we oh. still have a healthy Punisher though. Uh, this <laughs> is a chance it gets keep if Roomba is able to get a couple picks or two, but... It's, it's a fairly yeah. healthy keep as well. And it's not the Frozen Punisher, which I think would have been a confirmed keep. And look how fast that they burn it with those two AAs. The Greyman and Sylvanas is doing so much damage. Uh, Chris Bull coming out onto the Joanna to keep her nice and low. But uh, keeps going down pretty fast. Much like the team behind Ruba does do a fair bit of damage uncontested. Oh. But now with the Punisher down, they might have to back up. But the Phoenix alone might be enough to uh, finish this. No, never mind. I'm lying. It was a good push, but we still have equal structures, even if it is a weak keep um, bottom lane. As we see oh, a re-engage here. Oh, caught out. Ooh, that's a nice light bomb hitting both frontline members. As the Anduid root comes out, Cassia bottom side trying to pick someone up, but Greyman once again is honored, kind of denying a lot of value. Uh, who's going to win? Cassia ends up winning there, uh, and Greyman goes down. So another one for none. All right, we see our uh, level 20, 20 coming online, so I'll quickly try to go through that. We see uh, the Blessed Shield upgrade from Joanna, and then we engage, we engage actually from Moonbow Rotations here. At the level 20, they may as well, but that's a nice pull from the Anduin. Everyone's going to get out. They did get the camp in time, so it will not be a camp steal, but they will have a healthy wave pushing in on this uh, middle fort here. Mm -hmm. uh, to go yeah, back I'm to the level... Okay, go ahead. I'm a little concerned about how low that bottom keep is for uh, Tricky Gooses. With the Zul, that's going to be such an easy way to keep that lane pushing, comparatively. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like they're going to have to be using the Lava Wave down there almost on cooldown. 
Yeah, I agree. Although, yeah, it will be hard that when you get the double lava wave, if we see it, we'll see if that. Oh, oh it's going top lane. Well, that's yeah. probably because they're already all. Bottom. Yeah, they're all there, but I guess four champions is equal to one lava wave. Room, well, Roomba might get aggressive here, even though uh, level twenties are coming off both sides, as we do see the double lava wave coming out and pretty much ending any push that they yeah. could have gotten. Although the the goat camps, the weak camp as you call them, is right that lava wave with pretty decent health, so they will be there to do some siege damage. But the passive from Rag coming out. Now here's the real denial of this push. And this is when they accept the feet and leave, although if they're quick enough, they could get a really nice push in on this mid middle fort here. As mm. Rag is stuck in his in his trait and they're slow to rotate. Silver, have we have we lost you there? Uh, no, I'm here. Okay. So I just I just didn't say anything. You just had no comments on mid fort No, it's just you know what it is what it is. Ruba, <laughs> you you they can rotate faster, especially with Rag in that uh keep. I I don't I don't mind did. dead air. I was just I'm just worried. I'm extra uh, yeah. sensitive <laughs> to to your mic dropping, so that's why I was. No worries. Internet's fine here. All right. At the moment. At Level twenties. We're gonna get uh, Titan's Revenge from Cassian. No idea what that does. Uh, top off from Stukov. Am I reading the right side even? No, you're reading yeah, the wrong I, side. No, I'm reading the right side. No, because it's a blush and shield upgrade. Okay. Uh, we're getting the upgrade for our Poison Nova from Zul. So he's getting a lot of sustain. A slow sustain, but big sustain on that Nova. And then we're getting the range uh, of Flame Strike extended by 40%. Flame Thrower on Kale, which is makes it a lot easier to follow up on... Uh, dive targets when you have a 40% uh, flame strike range. We do see a almost looking for a gauge from side tricky, and they're trying to do the Diablo combo, but the Blessed Shield Joanna kind of just walks away. Uh, the Blessed Shield actually started coming out as uh, Diablo easily has jumped to start sucking Joanna once more. Joanna finally going down, but Nani's extremely low. He's gonna be chased up by the Cassian. Same with Diablo. That might have been a little too costly, as Diablo going down, uh, Nanani dying now too. That was a two for one, and you know, it's the Joanna who fell, and that's kind of who Roomba wants to fall, if anybody, right? Uh, yeah, that or the Zul. You want. Yeah, a front line. A front line, ideally falling, because you, you require every ounce of damage from your DPS. Mm -hmm. but, but that was just like the major value coming from Zul's alt there. It's It mm -hmm. does uh, poison over to so it's... much damage, as we see an invade here on Birdie at the camp. Is it really an invade if it's your own camp? No, I meant like uh, Cassia yeah, yeah. was coming to invade Birdie. That is what I should have said. Uh, and for context, the uh, Cassia level 20 lets her autos ignore armor, and if her avoidance is 30, um, she does 20% more damage on her autos. So just a nice damage boost there. Alright, so, uh, looking at Tricky Goose's upgrades, we see the second lava wave from Rag. We see the cleave on. Greymane's auto uh, auto attacks while he's in Worgen form. We see an upgrade to Wailing Arrow. We see the teleport picked by Diablo, and we see the second charge of um, what's it called? Of Leap of Faith. I don't know why I forgot to play an uh, Second charge of Leap of Faith. So, what? as we see this pusher pusher going in deep on the mid keep. Rag using his, his trait now, which I think will end this push quite a bit. Um, Trigus is clearly behind, they're down uh, almost two, two forts. I assume the bottom keep falls somewhat soon. Uh, do you think they're out? What needs to happen to get them back in? It feels like they've been out this entire game, but the structures don't necessarily say the same story. And I'm wondering if this level 20 is their advantage. They have lost a team fight fairly handedly at level 20. But the Poison Nova got a lot of value and more than it necessarily had to. If they can avoid that alt, uh, which Anduin has a hard time keeping up heal-wise into, they can possibly have a different outcome in team fights. As they look to force something by taking this bottom uh, camp right here. I think Tricky Uses needs to actually be the engage they want. Like, we saw the one fight they won, they won because they caught Ruby rotations at a weird place with a weird engage that was very much in their terms. Mm -hmm. A lot of these uh, engages are coming, like for example, the one we just saw at mid with the uh, Punisher, where Tricky is there first, they set up, they take some monkeys, and then, you know, Roomba gets to do their engage because Tricky has to defend that area to keep those monkeys. 
I almost like to see Tricky their second door set up in a weird position at their first. I would agree there. I also think they need to look passive at one of their forts as Rumor pushes up and use that space to dive deep. When you see your light bomb coming in, that's a great light bomb, even though Diablo's done that entire time. Greyman does end up falling as Solanus is pushed out, so I think this fort will fall pretty uh, uncontested at this point now. Uh, it looks like Rumor might be looking for a win. It is a 4v5, and all of Tricky Goose's has to heal up. But the roots can be deceptively powerful in this, especially because the roots can potentially chain all the time. But it can be a little chaotic. We do see Diablo try to jump in, save the core. Um, core down finally taking damage. It's at 95%, 93%, 2 1. We do have the goats, the useless camp in the game, doing a nice little damage, but they're targeting the minions at the moment. Uh, I think every spear is 1%. Attack that feather fast. Uh, Diablo, though, trying to keep Indiums in as the core gets lower and lower. None of uh, Ruby Rotation's fallen as now they turn on Sylvanas. Uh, she's forced to pop her and stop to get away and has to heal up uh, below 50% core. Uh, do you think Tricky can survive here? They need to be a bit more aggressive on this core here as they're kind of letting it whittle down slowly over time. As this will probably be game as Kalefoss just opens yeah. up on the core. And I mean, Diablo and Anna when falling, I think also has something to do with that. But GG. GG, that's game one. Roomba Rotation's taking it in a fairly convincing manner. I wouldn't say I was ever too worried about them losing that lead. Let's go to the stats but, scene. I don't know why that is... Okay. It's got some weird things going on there. While you look at the stats, I will set up the next game. Yes. Uh, you see a ton of siege coming out from Ragnaros. 300,000 coming out from Ragnaros there, and really just keeping them in that game macro-wise, I think, was, which is the point of a Ragnaros, but they weren't able to turn on the level 20, which is the whole point of hit, getting to level 20 of Rag, you get the macro pressure, and we also, he also turns on a little bit of the teamfight character, so. I mean, look at the XP too, right? Like, we saw Zul way ahead, almost double the XP of Ragnaros at one point, and now we, the game ends with him 6k ahead, like that's a, uh. Like yeah. a lead. And you even see more hero damage coming out from him, so not bad, but at the same time it was it was actually just the hero damage coming out from Cassian, 90k and Kael'thas 73k with the highest damage dealer on the side of Gooses being 66k on Sylvanas, so that's 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 the story of the uh, of the team fights there. Damage. But I think a lot of it had to do with who Diablo could get on. Like you saw almost every fight with Cassia versus Greyman bot lane, which Greyman lost most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on top of that, you know, Diablo is only really ever to get on their front line. Part of the issue was I think they only had that one front line to dive. But Ragnaros, yes, he's a bruiser, but as you mentioned, he's a glass cannon bruiser. He's not there to push through the front line to the back line. So I think it allowed Joanna and Zul to tank a lot of that damage. And Cassia to go unchecked. All right, are you ready to move into the second All game? Right. We are almost ready, as I want to just quickly get uh, the info of who picked this map. Okay. Uh, you should also check Twitch chat too. That's a daily reminder. To check once, uh, as we do have we a few viewers see commenting. Duck. See some duck commentary. Uh, post more them on that. <laughs> We have Roomba Rotations picking this one. Okay, so that means Tricky Gooses will get first pick. Uh, yep, just adding in the information here. Nice. Absolutely. So we do see Duck requesting to see your Amazon. I think you might have shown that at one point. Yes, yes, that's why the stats <laughs> went weird. For some reason, in my, uh, in my streaming, I have my Chrome tab like higher because I want to show Chrome at some point. So everyone gets to see the new desk I'm buying. So good luck, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> the new desk. I hope all my gonna, credit card information was in that screenshot as well. We'll see. Uh -oh. We'll have to do a post more than one on that. Don't worry. Yeah. I had to pick up the editing tools. I I mean, there's very few people watching the stream, so I feel like I could <laughs> track it down if anyone. <laughs> I don't know. Information. Do you really know Duck? Like, where is he? Where uh, is he? he lives in Florida. So if I see any of my. <laughs> Amazon uh, accounts shipping things to Florida. Wow. I think I'll know who don't, it don't, uh, DDoS him? Well, yeah. I'm already DDoS, so I might as well DDoS someone else. <laughs> wow, uh, that's really how it works, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Going to the 
Uh, now nah, we'll get the gameplay. Uh, let's launch it up here, Silva, and then I'll okay. go over to the gameplay tab. Uh, yeah, and we do see Duck also admitting that uh, that Rag was bad into Zul. Seems they struggled. I wish we actually had was playing like live stream. We could see who picked in what order. Yeah, no, if Zul the counter pick. The or drafts Rag. make it a lot more understandable of what's going on. All but right. I mean, like, go ahead. It, it was close games for most of it. Yeah, it was continue. really close. It was a one or two team fights away from Gooses completely changing the face of the game. But it did feel like Rainbow Rotations was in control for most of that. Yeah, I think the Zool really played into that. But we're now in game two, so let's focus on that. Uh, uh, so yes, I, yes. I will go first this time, introducing Rainbow Rotations. Idioms playing uh, Imperius. Urel on MJ Doom. So I think the Imperius is the main tank here. Uh, Iron on Stukov. A uh, Hiva, again, don't know if that's correct, but I'll try it playing the Junkrat. And then Rainer, played by Synchrony. On the side of Gooses, we have Zloth on the Murden, Duck in the offlane on the Rexar, oh. uh, Birdie on the Hanzo, the Nani on the Gul'dan, I'm going to assume, and Carpe Diem on the Turande. So, Liddell, I started last game. Uh, you started this game. You know the routine. I'm going to take... Give a judgment. I'm going to take Gooses... Uh, and talk about them as they cheese this top well here. I like how there was just a recent patch to stop this cheese, but wow, it's really effective. It's, it wasn't supposed to fully stop the cheese, it was meant to make it yeah. harder for one person. Yeah, it means Ming can't kind of poke it down, but we do see Murden caught in the middle, no jump left, he's gonna go down. One well for one dwarf. I don't know if that's worth, but and no, bear, Misha, it's not. And Bear, 0.25 of a death as well. Yeah, Misha really tipped the balance of the worth there. I have it, to give that solidly to the It rotations. might be worth. I think well, Urel will want if this. Nanani falls here. Oh my god. Sigourney barely missing that Q to let Gul'dan live. Alright, well if these teams would kindly let me speak about the team comp quickly. And like they did that last the game. Action. You know, from level 10 to level 14, there was literally non-stop action. So I couldn't announce the ults. Anyways, I'll get to it this time. I like I like the soul lane on Gooses. I like the matchup into Urel. On paper, mm -hmm. Rexar wins that. Yes. Uh, for context, Liddell's our solo lane on Tiny Dancers, so he is the one to give judgments here, not me. And they're all yes. correct. Uh, uh huh. I also like that they didn't. Oh, there's a pause. If I'm Rexar and there's Roomba, uh, if I'm Rexar and I'm facing this Roomba team, I'm also not terribly worried about ganks coming up for me, uh, which makes me able to play a lot more confident in Kaki as a top lane, which is another would you be there. Would you be more nervous as if Imp was put top and Urel was the main tank? I know Urel does a little worse as a main tank, but Yes, still. Urel would do a lot worse as a main tank, but I would be a bit more nervous, but I would still beat... I, so I should J1 say J1 I, I should say Rexa would still beat <laughs> Imp pretty handily yes. if, if they play a passive so focused. Uh, uh, we do see Idioms falling though. Murden is apparently the tankier of the two, as Raynor went top to gank Duck. Uh, Duck is actually goading the Raynor, and he is out of mana. I don't know if he realizes that. He uh, is he, very oh close, and he was one shot away from that. How so about that passive game? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it is going to end up being worth in the end, as the camp bottom does take half the wall and bottom tower. Meanwhile, they divert a lot of resources top to try and get that gank and they didn't get it so that is a huge early value swing for gooses and we do see that with the sp lead they're starting to develop there as too. for the rest of the team you have a lot of sustain but a lot of poke sustain coming out from hanzo and guldan so that's really speaking to the long fights they're expecting bottom lane as they fight over this yeah. over this uh, uh, ward here on the other side, there is a uh, rotation with the Junkrat with their long form and like a lot of area denial as we see the trap pushing Hanzo a little probably deeper than he'd like to be. But, you know, it's only Junkrat there. Uh, it was actually a good trade for Junkrat. That's what I thought he would take a little more damage there. Uh, I do... So what do you think about the imp main tank, Liddell? Uh, you've probably played more imp than I have. So I think it a has a spot. A I know Roomba really likes to do it a lot, but I would say on this map... I don't know if he is the staying power that other tanks do on a point like uh, on bottom point here. Definitely uh, be able to stay longer. Pardon? Very few tanks. Murden will definitely be able to outstay him. Yes. Very few tanks can outstay a Murden. Uh, we do see two top as Rainer is helping clear out this uh, Bruiser camp. A... Oh, he almost missed the uh, interrupt there. 
we, uh, we yeah, so go ahead. Uh, we do see Junkrat following to the Hanzo. Uh, I kind of missed that. But another fight popping out mid as they're trying to get a kill here just to have that denial on the dragon. We see Baron Urel duke it out top, so that's going to be neutral for quite a while. Uh, but, you know, maybe Imp doesn't need as much staying power if he just has enough damage as we see a nice Q onto the Hanzo, but he's going to kind of walk away. And now Idioms is the one in trouble as he's trying to get low. And he's going to be pushed off, but the timer is right now. Bear has been pushed off the top lane. Uh, it goes back to red side. Right. The only reason I think Rexo is losing this is Raynor came up and helped clear the Bruiser camp out and forced well, Rexo been to clear that times. out and, for, and be on point at the same time, which is a lot to handle for one little Rexo. He needs two Mishas. Uh, yeah, that should be the level two. <laughs> Second Misha. Oh. Yeah. My brain can not handle that. Just play like. Uh, we do see uh, a nice uh, stun coming up for Jirani, but not enough damage quite to finish it. He has bot lane. Uh, once again, Bear is planning itself top lane. Uh, and just to finish the thought, Al Liddell, on the team side of room rotations, I actually kind of like this setup. Uh, Dragon Hat, at least how they're playing it, with no double soaker, there's going to be a lot of rotating, which gives um, the Imp a lot of time not sieging bottom lane, especially with that uh, Stukov to heal him up. Like, Stukov will have the time to get a few pulsates on him mm -hmm. with while rotating. Uh, Raynor once again going to gank top. It's a lot of ganks. A lot of but... ganks, but it's not the best person to send necessarily. Is I'll look at talents for the first time this game. There's Exterminator, so I, I'm it's just for the bear. I, I'm not that afraid of it. But yes, I think they're, I think they're doing it though just to uh, get the Dragon Knight power. Like now that they have top lane for a reasonably sizable time frame, they ideally could push bot and put pressure mid. Obviously, we don't see tricky uses letting them do that. It's a nice junk rush trap actually displacing those minions into tower range. Very, this this map is the 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 thing is like you can lose the game early, but it's kind of hard to do so. A lot of it's just posturing and making sure you're getting little bits of value over time. That eventually, when someone does get a dragon knight or the you do get a team wipe, all of those little bits of value you've been accumulating kind of come over and boil over the top. So I'm talking yeah, like, about like slow XP gains by forcing people to rotate weird. Camps over time, getting little walls and towers here and there. And it really is just like a whittle down game until there's that moment in which one team has a clear advantage. And I find these games on this map especially go along with the Bridge of Death on both sides, uh, top lane. It makes it so hard to take that keep and like actually push on it to get a proper like win. But you see Raynor once again ganking top lane. Uh, I think it might, Raynor might just be double rotating the top which is not an awful strategy, but we do see the effects of bot lane as Dukov getting haymakered by Murd and Force uses Unstoppable. But I don't think that's going to be enough as the fear comes out from uh, Gul'dan as Nani ignoring the Imperius on his butt kind of just finishes off his Dukov. But yeah, uh, once again, yeah, that's. Top. I think that's showing the the weaknesses of, uh, of Imperius main tank here just because he doesn't have the mobility that other tanks do, other main tanks. It's only a I short dash of your Q and that's about it. I think the bigger issue I actually find, we just see a whiff from Hanzo on his ult there. I think more maybe for Sight. Uh, the bigger issue I have with Imp as a main tank is the lack of CC. I guess he has his Q that's like very powerful and does quite a lot of damage. But like, you know, I think the cooldown for his Q, if I recall, is longer than the Murden Q. And he doesn't have that slope which Murden has. Or AoE. I guess he does have the slow on his W. But it's like not quite as much. And rarely do we see the... Uh, people not going uh, Angelic Armaments at level 10. So it's just kind of like, like ETC would have his W up a lot longer to have more presence for peeling. Yeah, uh, I think the value you get direction. from him is that he's able to really force an engage with his long Q. You so do see a Haymaker into towers oh, and a follow-up stun. We're going to see him taking quite a bit of damage with the towers as Raynor does fall. Hanzo coming from above, trying to do some damage. They are going to get Indium, Indiums. Now they're turning on the Imp. And there's the fear, I think that's going to be a dead Imperius. Oh, a nice Junkrat bomb is almost good. Kill. Yeah, I guess, I know we've been talking a lot about tank camp. I just think you need a team, a four-man, that's able to secure kills on the queue. And if you, I don't really see that because Roomba's constantly all over the place on this map. You're sending uh, Reino yeah. top constantly, you're committing your L full-time top, and then you just have Junkrat follow-up on the, on the stuns. It's not a ton of follow-up burst damage, so it's going to be hard for the to get kills off of that alone. Of the, based on the lack of characters that are often with Imp in lane. Yep. 
Uh, we do see the a little bit of skirmish going down, but the Junkrat bomb is popped, but MJ Doom getting rather low. Imp coming down, a nice hook on the Tyrande, but like, I think they're a little too close for the walls for anything to really come from it. That was a great turnaround. Uh, the mid walls did go down with Dragon rotating top lane. All right, I'm going to quickly go over some of the alts here in this game. We have Angelica Armaments, as was talked about. We have Riptire from Junkrat. We have Ardent Defender from Yurel. We have a single Shovey Shovey from Stukov. And we Thank have Hyperion from Raynor. On the side of Gooses, we have a Dragon Arrow from the Hanzo. We have Haymaker from the Murden. We have Horrify from the Gul'dan, which will be for oh, Fear. Yeah, uh, yeah, Fear, well, the Horrify and Haymaker combo using to solidify that hip kill. Never stood a chance. And now we see uh, Raynor probably going down as MJ Doom is running for his life. I don't think he'll get out. A nice, uh, what well, was it, single pushy pushy is what you called it? Single pushy. Uh, to get the murdered out, but uh, MJ Doom forced to use his ult to get away with Hanzo still hot on the trail. I, he might actually be able to get this kill. No. The Not quite, away. but they will be able to steal Bruiser Camp, which yeah. It's quite effective because it's a long cooldown on this map might, and it has a lot of value. They might be able to take top with the two if they're pushing with it, but I think they're going to have to instead rotate out. Uh, uh, as lastly, the finish up. off these alts, we have Shadowstalk from the Tyrande, which Trump. is heals and stealth, AoE, global across the whole team. And then we have um, release the hounds. You see him though going around, going to try and get a uh, hit on the. Murden. <laughs> Murden was invisible for quite a second there before he gets rooted in the silence. His jump's already on cooldown, so he's going to be a little bit in trouble. But Gul'dan and uh, Hanzo do a lot of damage when in these tight corners, these running places. I'm, the, uh, yeah, I'm trigger. really liking the amount of damage Gul'dan is able to put out, and the lack of CC coming on to him in these fights is allowing him to just kind of whittle away at the entire team. And also, I believe Gul'dan's going W build. Let me look at Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So that adds, adds a lot of sustain for Nanani and also adds CC to Nanani as well. Yeah. Uh, a big thing I think that Ruba is punishing here as there's in fact another engage as the massive shove comes and pushes Murden out of the fight. But MJ Doom is still a little forward. He's going to be able to escape just fine with the jump. But Murden not letting them go. He's going to jump and do a slow. A horrified coming. He's actually haymakering the Stukov out, but he pushes the real closer, which adds up to her death. Um, I'm pretty sure Murden is going jump build. So you see him slowing with these jumps and going, and they're popping up a lot faster as a nice E from Gul'dan, just going to injure them as Ruma goes out with only one man less. So what I'm uh, liking here is, I know what you... I Are you very... Let, let me rephrase this question. Silver, <laughs> as the resident tank player for Tiny Dancers and the tank representative, are you in love with this Murden's ability to be able to go Haymaker and that his team allowed him to do it? I mean, yes, I think our team should for sure do Haymaker. But I think that's like an observation that like... Uh, Ruba rotation actually doesn't have that much damage. Um, Exterminator kind of does less than the average DPS that you kind of hope. He's no hyper carry. Junkrat is kind of the same deal. He's more of a mage with AoE damage. Um, the only real damage there is kind of imp with his max HP hit. But other than that, like I think Ruba has a fairly light damage. And on top of that, they're not very. Uh, they don't have a lot of lockdown, is what I was trying to say earlier. They have a lot of displacements, and they have the Q on the imp and potentially the Silence of the Stukov. But both of those are not enough lockdown to really kill a burden for full health, right? So by going the jump build, by going the Haymaker, you actually are giving yourself more escapes and more chance to uh, get out. As we do see Nanani falling, <laughs> basically isolated with the five people and We do see the, the typical uh, push past the Dragonite to kill the team coming out from river rotations. This is a common strategy on this map. Uh, but there might be a turnaround. Oh, Raynor, I think, was saved there. I, I think that was a mistake by uh, Rodin. Uh, and we do see the disengage. But yeah, I don't, yeah. So I think there's enough. If there's a lack of lockdown and a lack of damage, you can do it a lot more viably than other situations where Avatar might be better. I would agree there as they are positioning for a gank onto Murden, but they missed the Imperial Stun, and that ends any hope of getting that uh, confirmed kill. Yeah. Like, again, I'm really disliking Ruba's rotate, like, draft here. I think less so because of the lack of damage, because they do actually have a decent amount of damage coming from weird places. Like, everyone does kind of a bit of damage. But it's more the lack of a lockdown. Like, I really wish they had a, a hard CC that wasn't the MQ, or even an addition to the HQ. I think that's what I'm really 
Just yeah, like, and it's <laughs> also not their characteristic kind of team. It's kind of weird and pokey and sustain and mm -hmm. stay around and fight and, and, and look for like a weird displacement. But yeah. That's not really their bread and butter either. No. I also feel like they have a lot of displacement to set up a burst thing that just kind of isn't there. Like, you have the imp key, which needs follow-up, but, like, a Raynor isn't who you want exactly following you up until level 20. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'd much rather the Hanzo be on the... the... Nope, we do see the Hanzo all coming. Imp is pushed past the wall. He's gonna take a little bit of damage before getting out. Uh, Burden forced to jump out. He's gonna heal up and come right back up. He just tapped. Um, now Duck coming in from above with the Rexar. They're gonna all turn on your L, but I think your L still has her jump, if I recall, but... Murden's jump is faster. That seat comes around. You're all gonna be absorbing the damage. She's gonna be almost back to full health. And that's kind of gonna be the end of the fight. That's gonna, uh, that's a huge win whenever you get that URL ult out, though. It is a full two minute cooldown, which is one of the longest ults in the game. Rumba did fail to get the camp bottom two on top of that, so really no no plus side on the Rumba there. And they're giving up every time they uh, engage for a long period of time. They're giving up a ton of resources because they do have all of their way uh, lane path pushing due to uh, structure advantages. And camp top does not help that equation either. Camp top does not help that. Let me look at some builds oh. here as we have a bit of a best bit. Yeah, uh, 30 seconds. What I expect, although not full Q build from Rexar, so he's going for a bit of a hybrid build between Misha and Q itself. We see Owl build, which is very typical of Tyrande. Like, I think it's the only viable build right now just because of the amount of CC mm -hmm. and crowd control output it has. Uh, we do see a fight top is Juices is recognizing that level 20. Oh, and that is a wombo combo. Ended up killing the Junkrat, but Murden is getting actually fairly low. He's gonna Haymaker the, the, uh, uh let's do cop before he dies. But, you know, that is still, it's still a 3 a for 1 and Stu cop in a bad position. Although, that's quite a fancy juke by Iron, but I don't think it matters at this situation. No, he He'll want to die as quickly as possible just to be up with his friends right. faster. But I think that's a free dragon for uh, Tricky Gooses, and all of Ruby Rotation is going to be down for another 20 seconds once this dragon goes up. It's a free dragon. I don't think this is win. Dragon is still no. not quite as powerful. Uh, it, no, I don't think so. I think you're right. But it's definitely a keep, for sure. It's keep. Well, let, I should preface that if they secure a couple more kills here, then it's win. Yes, if but I, it is important to note that Murden is down. He is a main engage and tank. Although the tank thing kind of goes without saying. But actually, they are dawdling quite a little bit. This might not be key quite as convincingly. As we saw, uh, Ruba very much not afraid to go past the Dragonite and just engage that back line. So Gul'dan having to be very careful as he does not want to die the same way he did last time. But keep going down so fast. Late game Dragonites do so much damage. We do see Idiom's punted back behind the team. There, he might go from behind for an engager. No, he's nope. He's deciding. Yes, he is. Nope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm ignoring the rest of the team to watch Idiom's make a decision. Uh, he does get the Gul'dan, but he kind of delayed a little bit. He's gonna be a little over health now. He's also alone as Dragonite pushed away most of his team. Now Fjord back to the team. I do think Idiom. Oh, Trondi missing both stuns there, but Idiom's does fall anyways. And. This might be game now. We see the chase potential. Uh, oh, greedy, greedy Murden. Got greedy. But you know what? He jumps far and he jumps fast. And, and he doesn't get kill. Kill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was. It happens to happen every game Haymaker's chosen. Haymaker saves at least one person. That's the. Yeah. What Haymaker give a Haymaker take it away is my motto. <laughs> uh, we do see Dragonite finally running out. As Gul'dan is pushed a little further, but Hanzo using play of the game to actually get onto the Stukov. He's going to quickly assassinate him, barely escaping his left running with those clutch heals. Uh, but in exchange, nobody falls, but Junkrat falls. Sorry, I thought Misha fell there, but apparently not. Oh, this is looking very bad through rotation. As FDD forced to recall, uh, forced to go back with almost no health. As Sigrid now jumped on, slowed. A stun, a stun combo coming out on Raynor. He is, again, utterly destroyed by the rest of the team. And I think this is game. We are... Uh, I'm going to call GG. I'm going to go out on a limb there. Idioms. I think it's a really yeah. brave call to say GG right now. But <laughs> we will see a confirmed win. And as convincing as Game 1 felt, I would say Game 2 has felt even more convincing for the side of Tricky Gooses. Yes. I think I agree with what you were saying, how Ruba definitely controlled a lot of the game, Game 1, but it was no stomp, which Game 2 kind of turned into. It's Although, to be fair, it was close for the beginning. It's interesting looking at stats, though, because I was under the impression Gul'dan was the carry of that game, but in fact, Hanzo oh, had no. 
3k more damage. Hanzo was doing a lot of plays. Yes. Uh, I was very impressed by the uh, Hanzo. I was noticing abilities. some of the well time skill shots from Hanzo, but I was more just thinking Gul'dan was the bread and butter of weakening everyone down, but that wasn't I, necessarily the case. I think he, Gul'dan might have been. Like, I think Hanzo is also a lot more active in lane with damage he output. So, like, I would be more curious to see, like, sort of, like, I'd be more curious to see, like, a graph of DPS done. Right. Uh, to see where those spikes came from. Because I do think um, Gul'dan was the damage for a lot of the days, but Hanzo was the follow-up. And Tricky Goose has had a lot to follow up. Which sorry, had a lot of setup, I should say, not follow up. Although I guess they had a lot of both. Anyway, enough of me rambling. Uh, you ready for game three? I'm ready for game three as soon as I look at who picked it. And then I'll be ready. Uh, so, as Ruba lost, they get to choose uh, the first pick or map pick. And they went with the suspense is killing me. Uh, they went with first pick, so Gooses are choosing to go to Cursed Hollow, which I have seen a lot of times so far this season, Goose is going to Cursed Hollow and actually being very dominant on that map. So we yes. will see how... It's court for Tricky Gooses. And I'm how starting. How that turns out. That is fine with me. Uh, so we should do a quick name check in the loading screen so we can talk about the teams a little more. We have Idioms playing Zagara, right wing for Iron. Uh... Eva playing Sylvanas, Diva by MJ Doom, and Illidan on Synchrony. A very meme team coming from Ruby Spicy. 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 On the side of Gooses, we have Jaina on the, uh, Duck on the Jaina, Carpe Diem on the Abifer, Nanani on the Gul'dan. Uh, there we go. Arthas, <laughs> uh, Zloth on the Arthas. I'm getting it backwards constantly. And Birdie, switching the healer now, is on the Rhaegar. So... Real talk, I wish we saw the draft, because I feel like Illidan was almost chosen as a denial tool from a... for the Ava Illidan denial. I would or... believe it, because I think, ideally, you use that both be... Zagara and Illidan in and... the same role on this map. Kind of like the um, farthest, the lane farthest five, from objective. Four, and then ulting three, in. Yeah, but I mean, they could. One. it's a big map, so they could both be in each lane um, viably well. As we do I see mean, a bottom cheese on tower, is that what we're going to see here? Maybe. I mean, we do. this does open up Zagara to take additional alts, like the team fighting alt, which can have a very large impact. I mean, if you get that alt on the Ava clone, you effectively kill the Ava clone for most of its duration. Uh, we do see Ilden getting spotted there. Um, I also like the Brightwing having a global like I feel like... Roomba Rotation is playing a very mobile comp, and they're hoping to deny the point a little bit before committing most of their resources. Although Synchrony taking a lot of damage there. The one thing I really dislike about this comp, though, is that Illidan is like... Diva's the main tank, first off. Again, they're going very light, ta light tank. And it's tank Arthas, by committee between Illidan and Diva. I yeah, say. with the bright way to heal them both. And I guess... It's low but, CC, though. Very low CC. It's low CC. Um, Illidan is kind of hard countered by the Arthas Jaina combo. Like, I really dislike playing Illidan to that. A lot of the slows and a lot of just non auto attack based damage. Um, so I think he's gonna have a really hard time, especially the Abba Hat. If the Abba Hat's an Arthas, Illidan's buy in. Like, he's not doing a lot of damage. No, we'll see. Uh, it's, it's basically Roomba's win condition is out macroing and just being so annoying and evasive while getting siege value in certain yeah. lanes. Is kind of how you do it. I just see with the ABBA pick giving so much like macro power that like I think that's going to be extremely difficult to do. Especially because it does I not. Really I don't. I don't know if Roomba can win a battle pre ten, and that scares me a little when you're facing an ABBA comp on this map. Yes. Traditionally, when you're facing a macro comp on this map, you want to pick a team that can win the first three objectives, uh, tributes. And if you can get that cursed, a lot of the time it takes two, sometimes three forts. And that's just yeah. a ton of value uh, pre-level 10 or around level so, 10. I'm a little worried for a uh, Rubo rotation, but again, oh, we do see a nice gank up top, a Zagara coming in on duck, but they're going to get fi away fine. Um, yeah, but again, I, we we do not play these kinds of comps. I'm very open to being wrong. Uh, I'm, see, I'm very eager to see what Ruber Rotation can do. Well, you want to give a quick talk about what uh, about Tricky Goose's comp? Well, Goose's 
they didn't they don't have a traditional ABBA hat target. I think Arthas does an okay job at it, and it gives him a lot more sustained free hand, which he needs. Which I really like from him. But Yeah, look how sorry, look how little damage Elit's doing middle. Sorry. Yeah, he's it's it's a big it's a big nerf to him. He's he, he's he needs to be able to get onto the back line away from that Arthas to get value in team fights. I, but overall, I think it's a solid team comp. Rego is a self-reliant healer, kind of pseudo frontline. You think it's Bloodlust? No, because it is double mage. So I think it's, I think it's the heal, ideally used on Sloth or whatever mage is getting dived at that time. We do see MJ Doom getting pretty burned as uh, he is forced to use his explosion on the mech. Uh, I don't know how easily uh, Tricky Goose is going to get this as this objective is very close to those towers making it extremely easy to poke. But the D.Va going down, I think, will be the turning point of this. I agree. Sure but out a little more. Meanwhile, Bottom, this is a classic Moomba strat of ignoring the first objective in some way and hard pushing the farthest lane as we see yeah. Hiva and Synchrony just destroying this uh, Bottom Fort fairly yeah. uncontested. I mean, if... if uh, it doesn't matter if the Tricky Gooses gets the first objective at all three tribs if, and takes three forts. If Ruby Rotations have already taken three forts, really putting a heart to their name, getting those good rotations. We have a slight XP advantage for Tricky Gooses, though, uh, which some of the kills on objective might lend itself to. We also need... Ruby also needs to confirm any keep that they, or fort that they dive because we do have the... What's it called again? Why am I forgetting? What's the heal, the heal on the on the structures from Africa? Why am I forgetting that? The mule. The mule. Yeah. We have. So you don't play Starcraft too. So. Shame. Yeah. I'm not a nerd like you. I just stream a dead moba in my po po past <laughs> in my in my free time. I'm yes. not a nerd. Well, at least I didn't play WoW for ten years, yeah. 120 days of my life straight. And he called me a nerd. Yeah, I know. We're both nerds. I play sports, so I can be that. That's how it works. Alright, meanwhile, we do see a fight over bottom ship here as we see the similar strategy top as. But Jaina's there this time, but so is Brightwing. I didn't think of Brightwing value. Uh, On the we didn't track. talk about it, but I really like it with their team comp. With Roomba's team yeah. comp. I, I mentioned it as it's giving them a lot more like flexibility. But you know. Uh, without Jaina here, they're really struggling to take this thing as we do see Gul'dan falling. Uh, you know what? I might I might just say I might have been wrong about this Ruma rotation comp. They, they might be winning the over with kills and forts. Well, let's see a level team, level 10 team fight, 5v5. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. When Abba comes back online. But I do like what they're doing. If I was Gooses, I may have just conceded that top and kept getting the tributes. And according to, uh, according to Duck, uh, Illidan was first picked in the draft by uh, by Ruby Rotations, and then Abba Arthas were the first locks in response to that from the side of. Uh, so, do you think that was as much an Abba that was an Abba steal then? For sure. But, Instead of it being an know, Illidan steal. I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if uh, you know Ruby Rotation was doing 10 IQ or big brain, a million IQ plays, and picking the Illidan early to let the uh, Abathur get banned. Or sorry, picked. Forcing Tricky Gooses into a specific uh, play style. Ava comps are not as flexible as other like non other memes can be, and it, you know it, it kind of limits you in what you're doing in a lot of ways. I, but I don't know how big brain Roomba rotation is. I'm willing to give the credit. I think it's an interesting play. I know both teams like to pick priority over hiding, where we must have much more of a hide, uh, hide Totality. the meme in draft kind of thing. Where they just like to pick it and dare the other team to figure out how to counter it. But I I just don't like the team fight at all from Roomba. So the the betting yeah, on winning that. this early game really hard. Oh, yeah. Um a big thing is like I'm a little worried by Roomba rotations, is like how what's their finish look like? Is their finish gonna be bum rushing the core at one point? Like we do see mid falling, so clear like they're doing a really fantastic job of getting these Oh, objectives. they've executed the early game perfectly. Oh, from beautifully. The because they've, but, they've gotten the trip, one of the trips, while also getting all of the uh, fun boards. Yeah, but like, I guess what I'm saying now is like, what now? 
like, do they push for keep? Do they keep trying to do things like they try for bot keep while uh, top objective? Bot keep's a lot riskier because you're much more pushed up and the rotations are faster. Um, I think you need to go for long stalled out team fights here uh, to really let the waves push up and yeah. force music But too. they don't have the tank or the evasiveness to really do that. I guess Sagara has a lot of good, like, there's a lot of good uh, stuff, but as Arthas comes more and more online with his tankiness, like, kind of concerned for room rotation, how their part two of their game plan goes. But you know what? I was a debtor for part one, so I'm willing to be proven wrong. We it do see does curse. A curse. Yep, and we do see Ilden trying to take bot, uh, sorry, mid mid stuff, as he almost gets a tower and an Abathur. Now, do you think I it always... was a mistake that Illidan wasn't with the team fight there and potentially winning the team fight, or do you like that he Maybe. was still split, split pushing and getting his speed? I like he was still split push because he forces the Abba to pay attention to him. But also, you have to keep in mind, like Abba cloned the Arthas. Like, do you really want to be Illidan to two Arthuses? Like, like how much value will he be adding to that team fight outside right. a little bit? Of the I agree. Yeah, no, you may be right, right. there in terms of Illidan we just are... accepting defeat on the. We are seeing uh, a very interesting push here, though, going down mid as Curse is up, and Roomba saying, "Fuck it, let's just get a free wall." Uh, I like it because top fort was already gone with four gooses pushing it. It could cost them bottom fort, which they but might. But I think Illidan have... won't get there in time. He'll get there in time. Yeah, oh, he will. Nope, they're going for camp. And the I think that's a bit of a mistake. Is helping, helping out as it will and I, think, I think they could have saved bot there if they were a little faster. Yeah, they could have. Yeah. So, after all of our talking though about the amazing early game, one cursed negates a lot of that value? And that's Well, that's what I sort of said earlier, where like, they can give first curse if like, they get three forts or keeps. I didn't expect that to be reality. But like again, that's what I was saying. Like, I mean, I'm I'm allowed for the ride, with them. I'm no longer making predictions. Let right. Ruba guide I will me where it goes. To make, but, as we see in the okay. fight breaking again, a four well, man that was a fantastic. See, this is what I say. We're like that is a lot of the uh, a lot of the Abba value on the clone gets destroyed there. Uh, Zagara does end up going down as Arthas proving a little too tanky with the uh, Abba hat. He might actually get the mech. No, he does not. But that's still a three for or two for one trade, and. You know, Gul'dan is not out of the woods by any means. As a three for one trade, I should say. And that might be mid port. See a lot of things coming out from Tricky Gooses to defend that. It's gonna be hard to defend when you see a lone Rhaegar. Yeah, especially against control. an Illidan under port. Not one of the uh, cures you want to see there. Savannah's coming in a little late, but I'm pretty sure she does have her passive up. So this will be a little bit of a stressful time now for Ruba rotations. Oh, sorry, for Tricky Goose on saving this. Yule does coming out trying to give a little bit of last health. It is actually doing substantial amount. As Arthas now up, ulting to slow down the rest of Tricky Goose that's for Drew rotations. As Sylvanas does fall, Diva is forced to have her mech. Uh, a bright wing ult, though, will push away the team and hopefully gives Diva some safety. Here is my cool counter argument, though. To. Sorry, I was, I was waiting to say this before Goose got destroyed by the four man mark. Um, Ma, I should say. Yeah. Clearly. If your entire strat, if you're Roomba and your ideal scenario is to get those first three forts, that's great. But you lose first objective, which you expected. But you, now it's the mid slash late game, which yeah. we think is Goose's advantage, and you only have a one fort lead at this point. You mean, you're Did saying you they get might enough value, much value? Basically? Did you yeah, get enough value to take you yeah. to, to I a mean, win? If they were a little faster defending bot, they also might have been able to like like save that. And like having two fort advantage at this point, I think would have been much more beneficial, especially with those catapults. Mm -hmm. Um, but I heard you saying, and this is also what I was saying like, oh, Abba getting sniped by the Illidan. He is gonna waddle his way out. There's a nice fear coming. I'm gonna save oh, the Abba as he tries to recall in the bush. Oh, but uh, <laughs> I think that was a defensive ring. As Rhaegar healing the Abathur. Abathur really known for a lot of his heals, but we do see um, Ruby Rotation say, screw you, Illidan, we're going top and taking boss. They will hop on their own boss here too, though, so it's yeah, going to be a boss oh. for boss with Illidan dead, but and mid keep pushing in mind, quite hard. Keep in mind, Tricky did get cursed too, though. Uh, the Tribune. Tribune. Yes, so they're back on the map with, the, with those to count. Uh, and Abba will be there mid to sort of stall that mid pushing just a little bit as Boss goes down fairly quickly, but... Oh, and Mule, of course, coming out from the Abba. I think that is really going to make the defining difference here, too. 
the mule is a huge detriment to Roomba's strategy because they want to whittle things down at this point in the game, and whittling is not good enough. You need to finish things off. Yeah. Boss will do that. Boss will finish off wall and tower here, but it won't finish off keep. So. Yeah. I think uh, Roomba, Roomba is playing a very momentum-based game, at least from what I'm witnessing. Again, I've been wrong. I will probably be wrong again in this game. Um, so the fact that I think they got the five man wiped in the mid after that push with that fantastic Zagara ult, um, I think that's really we're seeing like the ramifications of that turnaround. Like the fact that they did they all died and didn't get mid keep. I think if they did one or the other, we'd be in a very different game now. Although we do see a lot of minions going up top. Although Jane is there to kind of mitigate that. Top is going to take a little bit of damage, but again, Mule's here to stop the whittle away tactics. Let's. Let's talk also a little bit about Arthas' ult. He went with Cinderosa. With Cinderosa? Uh, Cinderosa. That's, you played WoW, not me. I know. I'm bad. Also, <laughs> I'm here move. for the StarCraft 2 stuff. Cinderosa. Uh, it's... But a Cinderosa, would, yeah. If you play the Arthas, if you were playing the Arthas, would that be the same ult that you would go? Uh, probably not, because I'm like, unfortunately super biased towards Army of the Dead. But like, I do very much see why he went that build. Um, like, you don't really need the sustain against these team. Like, Illidan's not going to be doing a super lot of damage to you. Um, Abathur on your hat is going to give you a lot of health. Uh, really, it's just the Zagara and the Sylvanas that you have to be worried about. And, you know, if Tricky Goose is always the team pushing into them with the Abba ult, you know, you don't have to worry too much about that pressure. Um, to see that, I probably picked Army of the Dead just because uh, I'm very biased towards that. We do see Ruba pushing top lane to try and get that free pick of a fort or a keep. Uh, they might actually get this here. As all of Tricky Goose's um, recalling to try and stop this, they desperately want this to not be taken. They get the mule down though. Is, uh... Yeah. And on top of that, they're forcing Ruba rotations out. So they got what they needed to get. We were also talking strategy there while there was a big fight happening top, but that was a very convincing dive, I would think. I, 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 I should say. I think even when Goo, uh, Duck looked overextended a little bit on Jaina and Weak, there was too much pressure going on everywhere else that Roomba Rotations almost froze up and was like, ah, do we def protect our healer or do we get secure this kill on Duck? And ended up being a solo kill onto uh, Brightwing there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, again, I sort of mentioned this a few times, like, what is, I'm, I feel like Roomba Rotations playing this game where they're making Tricky Gooses react to them, and that's fine, I just feel like they only have one play, which is to push a different lane that objective is in, and Tricky Goose is trying to figure this out, and once all the keeps are done, it be, the strategy becomes, like, significantly harder. So... I'm a little worried for Ruby rotation, but uh, Elden is getting the alone Jaina, but if Abathur's there, is Jaina ever alone? I think Abathur had a Jaina wins. I think so, too. Not Especially because sure. Jaina doesn't need I would like to see that, just to, for science. <laughs> yeah, for science. Elden, please suicide for science. <laughs> um, the, one, <laughs> the one small thing about Arthas, he has one of the best counters to the Zagara creep that there is. As we do see another curse going to the side of Tricky Gooses. Illidan's still hard pushing bot. He might try to get a wall here again, like we've seen them do last curse. But this time, both teams do have 20. And Lindell, I don't know if you even read the first town, uh, level 10 talents. But I didn't that, really. I, I kind of questioned you on the only controversial one that I saw, to be honest. Yeah. Other than Ma, which over the global, but I like Ma, and we but, saw yeah. it having, having a lot of impact. We also uh, kind of talked about that level one, you know, we didn't know which all was being chosen. We do see it was not Bloodlust, and Rhaegar doing a massive heal on Arthas as he goes for both level 20s. Um, Arthas uh, chose the um, E buff, uh, Death's Advance, which is a new talent. It lets his slows get to 60% slow on attack speed and movement speed. Very deadly against this AA oriented team. Uh, Brightwing getting caught by the Jaina ult and horrified, he's going to be very much pinned. Barely living with any health. That was very close, but Diva going to be thrust out of her mech and slowed. I do not think she's going to live, but like Brightwing, she lives barely. Same with uh, Hyva on Sylvanas, but this top keep is taking a little bit of damage, and bottom was able to push out all the way. But look at mid. 
Yeah, if you're Gooses, you definitely here. want to secure those kills there. Oh my god. Get keep. It was one capital thing away from going down. And barely died before getting off that shot. We just got very lucky there. We see on Ruba going for a top boss. We'll probably see a boss trade out here, which is advantage. Well, it depends. If it takes down the keep, it's advantage Ruba. But if they can save the keep and heal it back up, it's advantage. But with tr Goose is taking a little longer on this keep and having a lot less AA or boss burn than Roomba rotations. I think this advantage does go to... I think I'm going to give it to Roomba, because Roomba also might just sacrifice their bot keep for that top keep. Do a hard push. I think that's definitely what they need, because they need to start building out a win scenario and enough pressure that they could possibly dive uh, yep. core at a certain point. Although Illidan is not here, he is bot taking a camp before doing some damage to that boss. That's an interesting pull-up move. I think maybe they're hoping the camp will do a lot of damage to boss. You know, kind of synchronize that up. We you see Abba ulting to try and take care of this camp and force the last of Rubo rotations away. But I don't think this boss is going to take the keep. I think he's going to die a little bit before. That's definitely uh, disappointing if you're on the side of Roomba. Yeah. Right? Meanwhile, Roomba not respecting their own boss. Right. Illidan getting on a little too late with the camp, missing there for that extra damage. I think this boss actually will take Roomba's bottom keep. Uh, I think that's uh, pretty much guaranteed if we see a fight we, breaking out mid. We just see a fear going on to the, uh, the D.Va, although she's going to escape and almost kill the Gul'dan, but he is able to W heal up all the way with the Rhaegar ult coming with those AoE heals. That's going to be a four-man full health. Uh, Tricky Goose as bottom keep does fall. So it's a one keep for one keep. Which I would I would say that's advantage Roomba though at the end of the day. Or uh, what they want there. Yeah. I would but actually you think it wasn't necessary? That. Do you think it could have been saved? I think it could have been saved, similar to bottom forward. Um, the issue is that bottom keep the mid keep was basically almost dead, and top keep was almost dead. So this also gives them a lot less like keeps to mule. Like if you have two five HP keeps like yeah. One of those keeps is going to go down no matter what. So I feel like Roomba kind of, uh, like, I feel like Roomba forced the decision on Tricky. And now they're going to have, like, two full HP things. They're almost trading, like, a low HP keep for a high HP keep. Something but... underrated we also haven't talked about yet is I really like the double, the clone on Arthas. Two Arthas mm -hmm. running at you is really, yeah, really so powerful. Yeah, very good for zoning. But we do see bot lane might be going down here as mm -hmm. all of Roomba rotation... Turning on that, that is going to go down so quickly. Arthas, what are you going to do here? Slow them? Oh, no you're not. Slow them all comes out, yeah. Yeah. As he does fall, uh, Sylvanas will probably end up going down here to the Horrify and the Jaina ring. We do see D.Va rooted and jumping up and down. I think she will go down here too. Uh, now, Tricky Gooses has a little bit of time just to try and make some... So come back. Well, you do have a curse that you can a uh, tribute you can give up here if you're Roomba rotation, so mm. that's not the end of the I, world. Would you kinda, have traded two kills for keep there if I told you that was not. about to happen? Absolutely not. And I kind of feel a little bad for Tricky not seeing this. Like I really like, but like there is no good decision for Tricky. But Tricky makes the best decision. And says we are going to play for a win right now. Who cares if you take the trip? Who cares if you get curse? We are going to win this game. And Illidan actually capping Curse before he comes back, so he's going to be here a little late. We do see the Abba clone is not out yet, but here it comes now. It's actually going to spawn on the reduced like reduced armor, but there's a lot of damage coming up from two Janus, as that's what the Abba clone does. And I think this might be game for Tricky, as they just take the win. Screw waiting around and playing Roomba's game. They are playing their own game. Wow. GG. That was a ballsy play, and... I mean, obviously, if they didn't finish core there, they would have lost, lost. themselves. Yeah. But, but I think they had to at that point. I think like, they, they got sick of Roomba's losing. games and they said, we need to make a definitive decision right now. I mean, we talked about how Roomba having the lot weaker of a team fight comparatively, especially if there's like a 5v5 team fight of the Abba cloning. So I kind of respect them forcing core, which forces the team fight that they know they can at least sustain, if not win. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they obviously had two kills down. And I. The thing I kind of disliked about Roomba that was like there throughout the whole game was the fact that like they were kind of slow to react to any moves Tricky played. Like Illidan kind of took a camp before tackling Boss, and Boss took bottom forward. You know, Illidan capped the capped the objective before contesting Tricky, allowing them to like win a little more cleaner. Mm -hmm. Like that might have been different if Illidan was back 10, 20 seconds earlier. Um, same with the minions bot lane; they were pushing mid, and then they 
were very slow to realize that bot lane was pushing and going to take the fort. I think there was like a little sloppiness that could have been cleaned up to give a tighter and potential win to Roomba rotations. Yeah, I think to give Roomba a little credit, I think facing that team that Roomba built, even if they lost, I, I don't know if I want to play that game, even if it's a win. If you if Goose is, like, how annoying yeah. that is with, with the Zagara and Illidan push everywhere, yeah. the Savannah's cheese, like, it's so frustrating, and I'm sure Gooses was stressed out of their mind oh, playing yeah. that game. And Constantly also making like, big decisions about how to play it. It's also like, do you take the tribute for a fort? Because that's what Tricky was, that's what Goose, that's what Rubitation was offering, Tricky Gooses. And, like, right. do you send two people to defend the fort? Okay, which two win? You're probably giving trip. In retrospect, I think if you're Gooses, you give the tri fort for yeah. tribute any day because it's just an inevitable fact that they're going to get those forts over time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Although I wish they might have given one of the tributes just to, like, get Abbott to 10 before they start really making those traits. Or at least Abbott to 7 for the mules. Helps yes. a lot more sustainability. I think mules 7 talent, correct? Yeah, Not 100% sure seven. about yeah, that. It's 7. Because auto attack at 4, and yet. Uh, Abafis can go mule and auto attack. So, I'm like, glad you know your build. <laughs> I know I know the type of build I want Abafis to go when he's on my team, so that he can give me auto attack on Samaru. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, do you have any final thoughts about the game or the series? Uh, the game itself, I think we did enough time breaking it down while it was happening. We do see. One sec, let me go to the standings here. We do see Roomba rotations. They play the game since this game that we just casted, and are now sitting in third place, while the Gooses are sitting in eight, uh, sixth place with eight points. I think that was a good series. It was two games that were not characteristic of Roomba rotations at all, and they happened to be the two games that they lost, which was they weren't an aggressive uh, CC chain kill comp mm -hmm. in second game and third game and they lost those games and they although were that I, in the first game although for the, at least the third game i would argue that roomba is very they like to be in control with a lot of their games like they do very well when in the driver's seat and the third game was nothing but them in the driver's seat so i, I would could test you on that a little as well uh, as yeah. game two they were definitely going for a kill comp i think they just lack the cc that they normally have they just yeah they, i just don't know if they can turn off what makes them good you know what I mean? I'm and, not convinced compete, that there are other mean? ways of winning the game, like a more macro game. I don't know if it's quite as fine-tuned as their kill comp, roll them, keep advantage, make plays happen, keep control well, of the game. I don't. I think that well, is where they're at their best. Well, we're, they're in a new division. They were in B East for the last two or three seasons, uh, actually with us, Stein Dancers, first time moving up. So maybe they're just trying to experiment a little, like find their balance. Like I know both of us and them have had some off and on when trying for new new strategies in a new division. It's a little different. I will we'll and I, I will say that they traditionally have said that they do not care about standings and currently points wise they're looking very healthy to make playoffs. Mm -hmm. So they could be just messing around now and thinking and playing around with possible yeah. strategies for playoffs or just doing this and saying if I'm facing Rumba rotations next time even though they lost, I don't really want to face an Illidan or a Sylvanas on this map. And yeah. they'll just draw out bands that didn't have to exist. Happen, yes. Yeah. Or, you know, force the team to go five globals. <laughs> like, what team does that? I don't know what team uh, does that. <laughs> anyway, uh, is there any final thoughts you want to do before closing this out? No, that was a good series. I think we were the most analytical we've ever been. We just basically argued yeah. the whole time about what, <laughs> what strategy and what's mean, happening. But that's heroes at its funnest, right? We're all about those analytics and theories. Yeah, what so, people tune in for, right? We, we don't we don't care about the teams playing. It's I also all about think the for replay cast, the people watching it are watching it more for scouting or analysis, which I think uh, opposed to excitement because you most likely whoa, know whoa, the whoa. outcome already. Whoa, whoa, a lot of people like to get well, like you know hot air up their sails. You know, we got a lot of from both teams watching themselves. Yeah. You but that's also self-analysis that. too, and seeing yeah. what other people think about how the game went down. No, I agree. I just think there's a that's a strong third reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope we can take the air out of their sails as we do. We're just naturally a bit more negative than we are positive. But you know, no hard. No, it's not. Uh, no, it's constructive. We try to make constructive criticism. We're not bashing for no. 
And we're saying this while I'm looking at the standings and we are in 10th yeah. place. So what the hell do we know? So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Duck comes in for anal, apparently. So what the hell does he know? Either. <laughs> yeah, Duck, you're here for the wrong reasons. Liddell does not order that stuff on Amazon. <laughs> well, Fucking Floridians. not on that screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. This Born has been computer. Canadian Connor. <laughs> Another episode of season of in season ten, NGS Division A East between the Tricky Gooses and Rumor Rotations. Goose is taking this two one once again. The Canadian Corner being a good luck charm for Gooses because I don't think we've casted a loss so far so far for them this season. I mean, if you only cast replays, you can continue that trend. I can I can manufacture that trend, yeah, as much as I yeah. want. Uh, thanks for joining right. us. This has been Liddell and my co-caster here, Silver, Silver, Silver. And uh, good night. Good night. Afternoon.